They did miracles. They were practicing iniquities. How many of you know there are preachers after they finish preaching, they will go and commit adultery and fornication. They can perform miracles. We have done many wonderful signs and we have called him Lord, Lord, Lord. You see that verse, when the Lord begins to pump that verse into my heart, it touches me. On that day, the faith you have, the grace you have, is going to be tested by the fruit it produces. And that fruit is that you've been delivered from iniquity. Jesus said, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Now in Luke, he added something that's interesting. He said that people say we have drunk in your presence. Now many of you have drunk in his presence today, isn't it? You came here, you are dancing. You are so excited by the worship. And, and, and we all felt the presence of God. It is possible for you today to feel the presence of God during the worship. But if you have not been delivered from your sin, you are not yet saved. I was talking to a young man and I said, are you born again? He said, yes. I said, why do you think you are born again? He said, I speak in tongues. Speaking in tongues is a list of all the gifts. That's what I discovered. Because if I say, how many of you speak in tongues? Maybe half of you will raise their hands. But if I say, how many of you have the gift of miracles? Everybody will bring down his hand, isn't it? Even those who manifested the Shekinah glory of God. I used to say, do you think it's easy to perform miracles? Hey. Those who operate in that realm will tell you that it takes years of what? Fasting, prayer, all night. And yet Jesus said, even those who have climbed to that realm of anointing, if there is sin in their lives, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I'm not here to condemn anybody. I'm not here to teach the law to you. My mission here is to help you to find the way of salvation. And as long as there is a deception in your doctrine and understanding of God about this matter of iniquity, you will never come to God and ask Him to help you. Jesus said in Luke chapter 5 verse 32 that I have not come for those who are well, but I have come for those who are sick. I have come that I may call sinners to repentance. He said, I have come to call what? Sinners to repentance. What is repentance? A big word. Repentance just means that word. You are a stubborn person. You are a rebel. You know that God is king in heaven and he has put ordinances of what we ought to do and what we ought not to do. Any man who decided on his own to digress from the ordinances, from the principles of God, commits sin. Anyone who has stayed away from the path. And you know sin is rebellion against God. You say, God, I know this is what you want, but I will not do it. God, just understand. I'll just do it once. Is God your mate? It is this heart of unbelief that turns away from God that Jesus said he wants to change it. 
So you can see that you have not yet received a new heart. God has not transformed your heart yet. And yet you say you are born again. How can you be born again and loving sin? I'm not saying Christians are perfect. But some of us, we pursue sin. And we keep telling God, don't matter. I'm saved by grace. Saved from what? He shall save his people from their sins. He shall deliver them from their bondage. How will they be saved? By calling them to repentance. God is calling you to what? To reconcile with him. And the process of reconciliation. God has put repentance. As a condition. For what? Reconciliation. You must come to God and say God I'm sorry. All my life I have lived it in sin. I have taken you for granted. I disobeyed you when I feel like. I obey you only when I feel like. Only when it is convenient. But God is saying. He came to call you to repent. He called you to decide to make up your mind. And I tell you that what? You see, God opened my eyes one day. I was preaching to a young man. When I was preaching to him, the Holy Spirit came upon him and I see him groaning in the spirit. And I was so excited. I said, oh, Father, thank you. You are working on this soul. Just as some of you are groaning now. And I said, are you ready to accept the Lordship of Jesus? Are you ready to give up yourself to the Lord and accept him? Vacate the throne of your heart. You have been a rebel, living your life the way you want to live. But God is calling you back to subject you under his authority. So that you can live the obedience of faith. He said, yes. Then he looked back and said, I remember some things. And he said, now he has a girlfriend in his home. That as a lady, they are staying together. And he said, if I surrender to the Lord, does it mean I should ask her to leave? I said, of course you have to ask her to leave. He said, I cannot get one again. I said, why? He said, this lady is so loving, so caring. I am poor, but she stayed with me. She's suffering with me. How can I just wake up one day and tell her that I'm born again, leave my house? You know it's difficult, isn't it? And he said, I walk in a filling station. And we used to temper with the pump price of petrol. And I am an orphan. I finished secondary school. I cannot go elsewhere because there is no sponsorship. But with the work I am doing, I am sponsoring my mother. I am sponsoring my younger brother in the university. So if I get born again, must I stop tampering with the pump price of in the I say yes. You say that's the second reason I will not get born again. I realized Jesus said, except you forsake all, you cannot be my what? You cannot be my disciple. You must bring them all to the altar. So you can imagine if these things were to be chased on his neck, he would bring out the chain of what? Woman. He would drop it on the altar. And Jesus would say, there is still one more. There is a chain of cheating. Then he will remove it and drop it on the altar. Many of you have come to the Lord, but you have not dropped all on the altar. There are still things that are hanging around you. And you see, I 
I was preaching somewhere. And the Lord showed me a vision. That's what is forming the basis of what I preach. I was there preaching. Then I had a vision. My spirit was taken somewhere. I was still preaching. Myself somewhere else in a vision. And the vision, because of time, I saw two mountains. One is a mountain of sin that represents the kingdom of darkness. Another one is a mountain of God that represents the kingdom of God. And I saw people are preaching to the people are on the mountain of sin. And they are leaving the mountain of sin. And between the mountain of sin and the mountain of righteousness, there is a valley. And the people will leave the mountain, but they will come and camp in the valley. And I look at the valley, and it is written under it, the valley of what? Decision. You have removed the talker of lying, and you have dropped. You have removed the talker of hatred, and you have dropped. You have removed the talker of unforgiveness, and you have dropped. You have removed the talker of fornication, you have dropped. God is saying you must put all on the altar. And you now remove all, and there is a, another one that is so precious to you that you cannot give up. You cannot give up. And God is saying, I'm waiting for you. So you are there for 20 years. You have not yet to remove that last one. And you are still in the valley of decision. And you have forgotten. Because while God is waiting for you to drop it, to drop it, drop it, with time, you have not taken the decision. You are not taking the decision and you have even forgotten. So the valley has become your word. Your kingdom of God. For everyone that is still in the valley today, God will open your eyes to understand that you are still in danger. Surrender all. What is it that is standing between you and God? What can you not give up for the Lord? Boyfriend? Cheating in the exam, stealing in the office, corruption. What is it that you can say, Father? I'm dropping all. Is it man? Will you throw all at the Lord? You see, most of you are answered altar calls. I don't do altar calls again. Because God opened my eyes to understand something. That it is not those who come and answer altar calls that are saved. Are you really saved? I come to realize that salvation is like pregnancy. The day you become pregnant, nobody knows. Until you deliver the fruit of the pregnancy. And Jesus said, you shall know them by their fruit. So even if you come forward, or you don't come forward, the essential thing, is that you are able to say, I was a blasphemer, I was a persecutor, I was injurious, but God has set me. Songwriter said, the things I used to do, I what? I do them no more. The evidence of salvation is not in you standing in front of anybody. Because most of the time, if we ask you, are you saved? What would they tell you? There was a time when they had a crusade and they asked people to come and give their life to Christ. And I came and I gave my life to Christ. When you know it is a lie, you never gave up anything. Sister came to my office. She knows I'm a pastor. Once she picked up her phone, she was talking with her friend. I said, I am in the market. When she finished, I said, sister, are you born again? She said, I'm born. This heart, Jesus is Lord, 
someone that is Jesus is his Lord, when you open your mouth to lie, you feel a pricking in your spirit, and you say, oh Lord, I cannot tell the lie. If I die, I die. I know most of you, you know this FC. Men used to come and carry you, isn't it? They said those in FC are cheap with a little money. I heard it, someone said. That those girls in FC they are very cheap. With just five thousand you can have a night. And some of you are very rowdy, disobedient. Very stubborn. You have no regard for God. Oh, Father, help them. Father, help them. But it is your word that I'm preaching. The souls I want to save. I'm not here to condemn them. I'm not there to speak against any message that they have received in the past. I have only one in Lord. And that is the message you have given me, Lord. That I will tell them, Lord, that they should depart from their sins. That Jesus can save them. That Jesus can wash them. That Jesus can deliver them. If only they would throw all on the altar. And enter into reconciliation with you. Father, release your spirit now. Spirit of reconciliation. Many of you that have left the path. Many of you have left the way. God is calling you. He's saying, come back. He can yet save you from your sin. You know what you did. You know what you're doing. And you think you are safe. You are not safe until you are safe from your sin. You are in danger. The purpose of this crusade is to reconcile you with Jesus. The purpose is catalyst up. The purpose is saying, repent. Repentance means you should change your mind. And when you change your mind, he will fill you with his spirit. He will give you eternal life. I want you to pray. Pray to the Lord. Wherever you are, you have compromised on God on many occasions. You know the heart of stone has not been removed from you. That is why you can sing and sing and sing and your heart is clear. That is why you can disobey God and it does not make anything to you. Because that stony heart is still in you. Can you pray and say, God, I'm putting all on the altar. I'm putting all on the altar. I'm putting all on the altar today, Lord. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Can you be on our feet as we pray? I want all of you to be on your feet. Can we have the band? I want you to pray in the spirit. If you are safe here, there's someone that's not safe. I want you to pray and say, Father, everyone that is under the voice of my voice, let the spirit touch you. God can renew the heart. God can renew the heart. And you pray in the spirit. Shiliyama shara katapuro shanda katapalata. Open up to the Lord. Open up to the Lord. The door of salvation is open. 
But now we're doing business with the Lord. Father, have mercy on all the people that are out there who need your touch of your salvation. The boldly declare that Jesus saves. I cannot see you, but I know burdens have been lifted up. There is nothing for you to do, great Almighty God. You Please, can you pray in the spirit? Angels are moving around. The glory of God is being revealed. Conviction is happening now. The power of God is in the congregation. Song. Sing the song as we begin to pray for the sick, as we begin to pray for the oppressed, as we begin to pray for the depressed, that the power of God will move in this place.
you are here with any disease in your body, some miracles happen instantly. Some will take time. But I want to be praying. I don't know what you came with. I don't know what your expectation is. But we are going to enter in the session of prayer. While we are praying, the power of God will touch you. While we are praying, the power of God will touch you. If you came here, you cannot see, you cannot hear. You came here, you cannot work. I want to tell you that the power of God is available. For those of you who are watching online, wherever you are, the power of God can touch you wherever you are. For those of you who have mental issues, memory issues, depression, sickness, cancers, tumors in your bodies, I want you to put your hands where the pain is and I'm going to pray. Wherever the pain is, wherever the tumor is, wherever the small swelling is, some of you have hemorrhoids, some of you have piles, some of you have hypertension, some of you have diabetes, some of you are sickle cell gene positive, some of you are HIV positive. There is nothing God cannot do. If you can believe, only believe. Put your hands on your head if it is all your body. Are we there? I cannot say anything. Stop praying. Libro Shakatalavara. Lambro Koseketi Vese Kasalava Katalavata. Libro Koseketi Velevaza Kasalavana Kata. Lambro Koshenda Katalava. Libro Koseketi Vere Katala. Rabro Shakata. Limba Karakata. Rekotopo Seketi Lava. Rambro Koteke Seketila. Rokotoko Seketi Karavara. Father, I release your power. In the name of Jesus. For I come against every infirmity in the people. I come against every oppression in your people. Father, in the name of Jesus, whoever is trusting you for something, let them receive it now in the name of Jesus. Father, I command blind eyes to open. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, I command yes that are blocked to happen in the name of Jesus. But we will impediment of speech. I command you to speak now in the name of Jesus. If you have a tumor in your body, I command the tumor to disappear in the name of Jesus. Anyone that come here and cannot walk, oh Father, I release strength for that life in the name of Jesus. Anybody with cancer in his body, I release power. Cancer, I curse you, I curse you, I curse you in the name of Jesus. Oh, for everyone who has mental issues, retention issues, academic issues, I remove it now in the name of Jesus. I remove it now in the name of Jesus. For those who are HIV positive that are here, oh, lift up your faith unto the Lord. There is nothing God cannot do. I command your status to change right now in the name of Jesus. Those who are sick last, I command a reversal for you in the name of Jesus. Anybody that is mental here, that is not in his right senses, I command you in the name of Jesus. The Holy Spirit, I adjure you to come out in the name of Jesus. Oh, Rakashele Barata, Lim Broko Tekesi Rafata, Ram Brakasaka.